if 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 I got a little leeway to go get me a, a steak or something like that, man, or, or or some lobster, oh, I'm killing somebody now. That nigga said he eat lobster. Yeah, I do, and I got the butter sauce too, man, the Lando Lake butter. Yeah, and I got the little three prong fork, and I dip it, man. Yes, I do that. All right. Don't call me a demon all you want. I can really give a fat rat. A source of blood, a flow of blood, all right? That's what it means. And it says menstruous blood or blood after childbirth, but when it's talking about a fountain, it's talking about blood, period, point blank, all right? We're talking about blood. So that means that the house of David, number one, has to have a king, and it has to have a blood sacrifice for sin and uncleanness. Where is yours? Right? Yo, I'll tell y'all what. Nigga. We got ours here. Wanna know why? Because the most high has got I got kidney failure. Alright? But a flow of blood, I give my blood three times a week. Oh, I know what y'all gonna do. Y'all gonna laugh at that. This know what that means. Do your homicide side bleed? Yes, he did. Am I bleeding? Yes, I am. You ain't gotta believe a goddamn thing. But I tell you what, it's my own blood. And I gotta go in there three times a week. Every day, and I've been doing it. I have to stop working to do it. So y'all are gonna think that I'm cursed because my kidneys have failed. No, the Most High told me he was gonna do this. Let's go back to uh He's not going to listen. Shalom. Call Laimla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah. By Hashem Gonkadash. Our praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor. To the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson the spirit does not lie. So what did I just say? The word is truth. The words that I speak unto you, they are life and they are spirit. So there's many false prophets that are on the scene in these last days. And quite frankly, they don't have the Holy Spirit. Nowhere in the scriptures did the prophets, apostles, boast on eating pork. Neither did they teach their followers to eat pork. Neither did Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, who walked as an example, set before us, eat pork. And then he says he's King David. No prophet is going to tell you who they believe they are in the reincarnation. Not going to happen. And the Bible says there is no remembrance of the former life. <clears throat> so let's go here. Matter of fact, we'll go ahead and get that because he's saying that he's, he remembers who he is. <clears throat> let's go to Ecclesiastes 1. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 1, let's go to verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. <laughs> we have an example of that where John the Baptist was asked who he is. <clears throat> Uh, right here. This is the book of John, chapter 1. Let's go to verse 20. 
Let's go to verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Hamashiach. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. So he didn't remember who he is. But Yahawashai knew who he is. Let's go to Matthew 16. <clears throat> Let's go to 17. No. Yeah, 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 right here. Matthew 17. Let's go to verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elijah must first come? And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So he was telling them that John the Baptist is Elijah. <clears throat> see here. Uh, let's see. Might be eleven. <clears throat> yep, eleven. Matthew eleven. Let's go to verse eleven. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he, <laughs> verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So all Israel is going to be saved in the kingdom to come. Let's go to verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah, which was to come. Wait a minute. Remember, John said he is not him. So there is no remembrance of who we were in the former life. But we read that Shai clearly says that it is he. But in the kingdom to come, when we read verse 11, all Israel is going to be made perfect. Why? Because the spirit is going to be turned up full blown, which means the word is going to be ingrained into our mind. So our bodies are going to be changed. <laughs> so how do you come on the scene telling everybody who you are? You know, Shai went and hid himself when they attempted to crown him king and started calling him king. He went and hid himself. And King David would not be teaching a congregation to eat pork or to commit adultery. <clears throat> Let's go here. Before we do, I want to go to Psalms 40. See, that's right here. So when we read this, this is King David. Speaking in the spirit of Yahweh, 
which to make it to get to the point, he has the Holy Spirit. So he's speaking in the spirit of Shai, which simply means he has the Holy Spirit. This is why he said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let's go ahead and read Psalms 40 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Here's the key point right here. So Shai is the spirit of this book. Let's go to verse 8. That's my key point. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the Most High said in Leviticus 11 to not eat the swine, the pork. So how in the world are you not having the fruits of the spirit of King David. He delight to do the will of the Most High. The Bible says he's a man after the Most High's heart, which is the doctrine, the spirit of the book. So already there's a strike against you. Well, there's about three strikes against you already. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. No, I have taught them to eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. So you do not match the fruits of a righteous tree at all. Here it is. This man has a colostomy bag or what appears to be a colostomy bag. He's on dialysis, having or suffering from chronic kidney failure, and still playing with the Lord, teaching it's okay to defile our temples with abominations. You're playing a dangerous game. You look like you got spirits on you, a legion of spirits all over you. <clears throat> Psalms 40 and 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord. Thou knowest, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the congregation. So King David is teaching the truth. He's doing the will of the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> That's what the Bible says. He's not teaching it's okay to be rebellious. <clears throat> Let's go here. Let's go to Psalms 119, verse 80. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. So let's look up this word sound. The statutes, don't eat swine. Don't eat shellfish. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Let's look up this word sound. <clears throat> sound. It looks like tamayum. Yeah, it looks like tamayum. Sound. Let's go ahead and click on it. Sound. <clears throat> Prescribe task. Action. Statute. Ordinance. Bounds, custom. <clears throat> yeah, let's click on the right one. Okay, go to sound. Oh, here it is right here. This is sound. I clicked on statutes, but this is sound right here. And it means whole, perfect, perfect, complete, wholesome. 
say, uh, complete. So the word builds us up and makes us complete or full, perfect. See, so what is that? Well, let's go here to probably Psalms 19. Let's go to Psalms 19. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So this word in its entirety is the law. So it's perfect. So why deviate from it? I take something that is pure and mix it with something else, defile it and dilute it and chop it down just to feed your own belly or to push your own demonic agenda. Why defile something that is already pure? I'm thinking about the movie American Gangster, where he defiled it, made it weaker, mix it in with other diluted elements, and then called it blue magic. So you're way off. So King David is promoting doing the will of the Heavenly Father. Let's go to 1 Kings 15. This is talking about Abijah reigning over Judah. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat reigned Abijah over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Ma'akah, the daughter of Abishalam. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as the heart of David, his father. So King David's heart is perfect, which means the will of the heavenly father is within him. Remember Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So you're not looking like the fruits of a righteous tree at all. You're looking more like a poisonous ivy tree or poison samak or poison oak bugged out, bugged out. <clears throat> Let's read that again. And he walked in all the sins of his father which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. So David is seeking to please the Heavenly Father, not teaching a congregation rebellion, which is as the sin of witchcraft. Let's read it again. 1 Kings 15 and 5, because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him, all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So yes, he went off by causing Uriah the Hittite to be killed in battle and to take his wife and commit adultery. But at the end of the day, King David's heart was right or perfect with the Heavenly Father, which means he delight to do his will. And we read that here, Psalms 40 and 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation, lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. So he said he preached 
righteousness. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6. Somewhere around here. Deuteronomy 6. What is this righteousness? And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So you are smoking and suffering death by a thousand cuts. You are way off with a legion of dark demonic spirits on you. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 6 and 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So part of doing the commandments is not eating the filthy, disgusting swine. Deuteronomy 14. Let's go to verse 8. And the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. So King David preached righteousness to the congregation that we read in Psalms 40 and 8 and 9. He didn't teach to rebel against the Heavenly Father, but it was King David's will to do. It was King David's delight to do the will of our Heavenly Father. Let's go from there. First Kings 9. Let's go to verse. King Solomon is being instructed here. Let's go to verse 3. First Kings 9 and 3. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. King David prayed for wisdom, which is the fear of the heavenly father, Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, and to walk in all his ways, to keep the charge. Let's go to verse four. And if thou will walk before me, as David thy father walked. No, he taught the congregation to eat parasites, swine, abominations. So this man is way off. Let's read it again. First Kings 9 and 4. And if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgments. So King David kept the will of the heavenly father at the forefront. We read it. So I don't know what this man is talking about. See? See? Psalms 119 and 80. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. So when you go into that word sound, which we did, it means complete, perfect. Hence, Psalms 19, verse 6 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. I mean, come on now, real quick, and we'll get ready to close out. Let's go to Psalms 116, somewhere around verse 14. No, I need to go back to... Yeah, right here. 
Psalms 119, verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. So if the Most High said that the swine or the pig is abominable, then the right thing to do is to respect it and honor that and not touch its filthy flesh. If you're eating pork, you might as well be eating a dead body. Human flesh. They're all abominable. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Come on now. So a righteous tree is producing truth. Not rotten apples like this wicked creature here before us. I'm not sure from under what rock this wicked, wicked creature crawled from underneath. This man is the devil. The devil comes from the Greek diabolos, false accuser, deceiver, or slanderer. Let's get ready to close out here. Let's get one more. 1 Kings 11. Let's go to verse 3. So this is talking about King Solomon in this context. How his heart was not perfect with pleasing Yahweh as his father David. 1 Kings 11 and 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. So his sin was idolatry, following after the gods, the rituals, the worships of his wives and concubines. Verse 4, For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. We read in Psalms 119, verse 80, See, so being perfect is sound, which is complete. No lie is of the truth. Is that not written? Yes, it is written. So King David would be operating under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. See, right here, Psalms 119 and 80. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. So David would promote the true doctrine and sing the righteous song or melody and not deviate from off the beaten path of the straight and narrow gate. So many false prophets are springing up, coming out of the woodworks, bugged out, bugged out. See, Psalms 119 and 92. Unless the law had been my delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. So avoiding what angers the Most High, but seeking to do that which is pleasing in his sight. Verse, let's go to verse 33. Excuse me, Psalms 119 and 93. I will never forget thy precepts. No, David is going to promote eating shrimp, crab, pork, lobster, teaching false doctrine. Let's read that again. For legion, these wicked creatures here, a fire is going to be kindled in the midst of these wicked creatures. <clears throat> Psalms 119 and 93. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, save me. For I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, 
but I will consider thy testimonies. So, the elect have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, and the spirit of Yahweh Shai is prophecy. So, we cannot be deceived if we follow, study, and know the script. This word, no abominable vow beast that's made to be taken and destroyed will be able to deceive the Lord's elect. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And I recommend you subscribe to the beloved Elder Manataza, his page out of South Carolina. I put it up at the beginning of this lesson so that you can see it. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashawala and the Bad Bapal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatan. Shalom.